Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing excellent. I'm in the Z with Jeff right now. Hello! And we are heading out right now to pick up my new car. We're leaving a lot later than we thought. We're a little bit unprepared because we don't have good lighting. So hopefully it looks okay with Jeff's LED uh, dome lights. But basically, car was supposed to be here two days ago, then yesterday, still not here. Supposed to be here hours and hours ago, still not here. But the driver says, hey, I'm heading down to a Walmart parking lot to unload three other cars before your car can come off the trailer. So we're gonna go ahead and head down there and meet him just to save everyone time. And there's no way you can get that tra big trailer into our residential area. So we're gonna catch up with you guys when we're back down and the truck's unloading. What do you think we got? Here's the big reveal. Dun, dun, dun. That's right, baby. Another white FC. We're gonna get her unloaded off the trailer here, and then we'll introduce you to the new More Garage FC. Of course, we're here waiting. Because. as they pull off this Mustang. Of course, we're here waiting. I don't know if you can see me, but the first car on the truck was the FC. Between, so every other car has to come off except the top. So, didn't mean to be filming in the dark. Probably looks like a spooky horror story, but uh, pretty soon we'll get her home. Good start up. And that was a good start up. Yeah. He's good on this side. I gotta see it. Oh yeah, just go straight out. I gotta see it. Okay. There you go. There you go. Heck yeah. Alright. That is strange. <laughs> yeah, everything you know <laughs> just turned upside down. <laughs> Gauge. All right, so just did the first zip around the block to the gas station. <clears throat> Left to uh, right hand drive. It's a trip because you're thinking <laughs> about everything differently. It's not too hard. Like everyone thinks, oh, the shifting's going to be hard. That's not the hard part at all. It's just like orienting yourself in the vehicle and being like, okay, everything's a little bit. Woo, everything's a little bit different and you're like it's just like you're almost in a daze but anyway there's a few things missing in this car no turn signals makes it difficult um, but uh, all in all ran really well pretty easy to drive so it's late um, but no turn signals I just want to get home so we'll probably pick this up for you guys tomorrow and we'll have full sun all right everyone so it is the next day as you can see you know it's the evening still got plenty of sun and we got the new fc in the garage with all of our nice overhead lighting so <clears throat> first thing i want to address is the question of why would you do this why would you buy the same color of the same car and it's a simple answer i was devastated with the engine fire from the fc and as i thought we i looked and test drove some other cars and I just couldn't shake the fact that I want to have an FC. I want to have a street driving FC that I can enjoy as my semi-daily driver with occasional track use. And that was the plan. But unfortunately, the chassis of the other FC has just taken too much damage. It's been in multiple crashes. It's had a fire rip through its wiring. And the path to get that car back on the road and, in, and to be able to enjoy it for that purpose is a very, very long road, um, which means we stopped producing videos for the channel on the FC, which is not good. And also, I don't get to enjoy it. Let me just make sure that everyone knows though, we appreciate so much everyone who donated to the GoFundMe and those funds are going towards rebuilding the other FC. So the other FC is not gone, it's not out. And I'm gonna detail for you just a little bit 
of the plans for how both these FCs are going to work in just a moment. The long and short of it is that car is never going to be a street car again. It's going to be stripped down and treated as a track car, which is great because we get to have a track car that's dedicated for track use um, that we can do different types of modifications for. Some people were, um, I guess disappointed with the horsepower numbers we put down on the dyno, but that's because that engine and that turbo build is made for making 400 horsepower and it's made for making it in a fast, responsive, and high torque, a low RPM way because that's what makes streetcars feel fast is from stoplight to stoplight and from on ramp to off ramp. Now we can do a different style of build for you all and have the street build and go to a lot more events with both vehicles. Basically, the plan with that FC is it's going to be race wired, it's going to be stripped down. We're going to cannibalize a lot of the parts from that car into this car uh, until we get more progress on that build, at which we'll put more race spec parts. So, for instance, we have Fortunato 500s, those are going to go on this car, whereas a more track purpose, less drivable, daily drivable uh, suspension setup will go on that vehicle. We can also do things like put a cage in without making the interior less tolerable for daily driving while we keep this one without a cage. So there's a lot of cool options we can do. Another reason why with the same car besides my love story with the FC is that we already invested a lot of time, energy, and money into the engine, the turbo, the wiring, the, the computer, the suspension, the tires, the wheels, and, and also restoring the interior. And so all of those things will be transferable over to this car and it'll be very quick to get this car at a very, very nice spec with a lot of streetable power, a lot of fun to drive and very, very comfortable. So more details to come on those plans as we move through the weeks and months to come as we work on both vehicles. And right now what I'd like to do is kind of give you a walk around walk through of the new car and show you the good and the bad. So first of all, the good, of course, it's a running, driving, imported right-hand drive RX-7, which is super cool and something I always hoped to have and never knew if I would, but now I have it, and that's very exciting. The good also is that she runs great. I had the opportunity to drive her to and from work today and do some uh, errand running real quick, stop by, see my folks, show them the car, and she runs great. She drives great. Uh, and she runs smoother and quieter and more comfortably than my other FC ever did. Now, the odometer in here reads the equivalent of about 88,000 miles. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical of that reading, and it's nothing to do against right-hand drive specialties, which is where I got the vehicle from, and I had a great experience with them, um, because, you know, they have to trust that they get it from in Japan, and what you have to realize is these cars have a manual um, mechanical odometer and speedometer, so if at any point that was disconnected or whatever, those readings may not be correct. If so, it's a hard 88,000 miles, um, not from an engine standpoint, just from a chassis standpoint. So I'm gonna show you some of those details in just a moment. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start her up for you and show you how that is because it's a nice, quick, strong start. I think the battery could do with a little bit of a change here pretty soon, but you can see we got some cool stickers in there from the other owner down here and some mods in here which I have to dive into a little bit more. But anyway, let me show you. Now the car's already warmed up because as I mentioned, I've been driving her around, but uh, there we go. Starts right up, runs well, idles nice. Um, where is the idle? Yeah, less than a grand, which is nice, especially for noise. And um, what I do also want to show you way the engine's purring and how the engine bay looks because that's another big positive. And ask all of you a question as well. Because I'm getting this pulsing air noise and I, I'm not sure if it might be the AC compressor. So I want to ask all of you out there who are experts who maybe know what's going on if that means the compressor's dry, if it's bad, what it might need. But here's the engine bay. Looks pretty nice. Now you'll notice the car is white. The engine bay is silver. And I'm gonna address that in just a minute, but I think you already know the answer. But all the stock equipment is here. We have the smog pumps. We have all the stock rat's nest. 
We have this uh, strut tower bar, which is just wrapped in carbon fiber. Um, we have the strut covers. Ooh, looky there, we have some suspension. We have to figure out what suspension that is, which we'll do probably in tomorrow's video. It's a nice epexy intake. There's a blitz blow-off valve down here, which is cool. Um, upgraded wires, stock coil packs, which look to be in great condition. And if you look at things from this perspective, to be honest, this engine bay and the way the engine is kept and everything, it definitely looks like it could be 88,000 miles. So I'm very, very happy with this. Again, that noise, if you hear it, if anybody knows what that might be, please let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram. It's the best way to direct message me. Now, before I move on to the bad, I want to let everyone know that I worked with Right Hand Drive Specialties out of Kent, Washington. Kent, Washington. And from the very beginning of me seeing this car listed on their site, it was a great experience. I, taught, I spoke multiple times directly with the owner. He was uh, more than forthcoming with all the information through the whole process. And I would highly recommend them for anybody wanting to buy an imported car. They make it very easy. They have options for financing. They'll help you get the title. They'll even help you get transportation at a very reasonable cost. And I think that the owner there looks for cars that he's going to bring over here that are at the right price point for the people in America who want to buy them. Um, this car is not in perfect condition. It's a great car. It's a great base to start with. And especially because we have all the resources from another vehicle, this is going to be a killer car in no time flat. But you have to keep in mind that I got a great deal on this car. Rather, I need to keep in mind. And if you look at the prices to import an FC from Japan before importing, I think the price I paid for this car is great. Now, so when I move on to the bad, it's just the items that are not perfect. It's a 30 year old car. There's things obviously that we need to address and that's part of the fun because obviously if you've watched the channel for a while, we like fixer uppers. We like work to be done. We like getting a great value and then enhancing that car through our own blood, sweat and tears and making something out of it. Now, before I lose my lighting, I'm just gonna shut the garage door so that our overhead lights can give us a little more power. All right, there we go. So I guess we can start at the back because that's one of the easiest places to find some problems. First of all, I have a windshield wiper if I choose to put that on, so that's not a big deal. But this wing, this wing, I don't know what happened to it, but boy, oh boy, is it jacked up. The good news is, <laughs> look at that. On the good news side of that, I have a new, or not new, but a repainted, refinished wing in the same color from the other car, so that's no big deal. Rest of the back is in really good condition. These taillights are in good condition with no cracks, chips, or anything, which is incredible because those are expensive. As you move forward on the vehicle, um, these wheels are works wheels. They're are work wheels. They're cool, they're two three piece. They're small by today's standards. They're about the OEM size. They are put on here with spacers to make it have this cool looking fitment. Um, but they have seen better days. They need to be refinished at least. And of course, when we swap a motor in with more power from the other FC, um, this is not enough rubber. But always good to have an extra set of wheels, even if it's just to drive to and from the track if we're not gonna trailer and go from there. Now let's talk about the interior. The interior, if you look at this door card, is in incredible condition. But some of the items have their normal wear and tear for plastics on a 30 year old car. So for instance, we've lost the power window switch for the driver's side over here, and it's pretty hot out. We've lost some of the top trim pieces, including the idiot light surround, which is a very sought after piece. We have some damage to some of the pieces here that just come off that I need to fix. Even though this turn signal stock does work, it's loose in there. We're missing some <laughs> shift boot and we have a completely disintegrated center console thing here. But as you guys know, I've got an, two center console cover pieces. I've got a whole new armrest that's beautiful and black. I've got 
two shift boot covers that are in great condition. I've got extra vent covers. I've got extra idiolite surrounds. And the main thing I need to deal with, if I really want to, is this right here with sticking up. So I have a few plans on how to deal with that. It'll probably be in a video in the future. Um, it's not a huge priority because again, it's just small, small cosmetic, but functional things like my turn signal stock, obviously. And I really want to get a radio in here, but this is really cool because what this is right here, cup holders. I am going to take those out because it does still have the factory plugs and I might be able to get the dual din vert stereo I have in the other FC working, which would be really cool. Um, there's a trim piece up here that I need to touch up, take care of, and the mirror is in its standard state of decay for most FCs this age. So I got to do something about that because it loosens up when you're driving. Otherwise, the interior is very, very complete. I even have the hatch cover back there. These struts are done for, um, which most of them are on any FC, um, but they don't even hold the hatch open. So the ones on the other FC do, so I might just swap those out. It has the JDM back seats for the 2 plus 2 configuration, which is really cool. And we have some kind of improvised aftermarket, but Mazda brand uh, floor mats, which is pretty cool as well. So all in all, the interior is really good. I do want to move this boost gauge because I don't like the way they did the wiring and the placement and maybe get it up here, which is where I'd prefer to have the boost gauge. You just put it on top right here and it sits below your RPM gauge um, tachometer. And then there is a boost controller, but I have not been able to get this to work. And I don't know what this wiring is for. I'm going to figure that out. It's the same color as the wiring I used for the power door lock system that I have on the other FC. So there may be something hidden in here if I'm just missing the key fob. Uh, or they might have just taken the whole unit because... There's these two bullet connectors, and this is like surprisingly the exact same color and bullet style connector as the aftermarket door locks I used on the other FC. So it might even be just plug and play if I need the controller unit, but that would be kind of cool. Um, glove box is in good condition. Already got my documents in there. And overall, I'm very excited. This power window switch is also done for but again I have extras of both those switches so that's exciting this particular model does not have a sunroof which is kind of a bummer because for the streetcar that's cool but for rigidity and lightness it's more preferred so it's a give and take I wish that the track FC didn't have the sunroof and you know vice versa but anyway in the back here I have a front lip that's been pretty mangled but it's pretty cool looking and I actually have the same exact model in the same color on the side of the house with the other FC as well. So we get to throw that on if we want to. What else, what else? There's various paint chips and cracks around the vehicle um, that need to be touched up, but nothing that looks bad at all if you stand five feet away. And most cars 30 years old, unless it's been fully restored by a body shop, is gonna be a five foot car minimum. And I guess that brings me to the elephant in the room, which I already mentioned, which is the engine bay color versus the rest of the car. The engine bay is the color, the original color of the vehicle, I'm fairly certain. Um, and because the paint in the engine bay, aside from some rust up here where you get normal wear and tear from driving, and the overall cleanliness in the engine bay, plus the compression test, which is already run on the motor, we're going to do our own just for the channel. But, um, this is a great running condition car, which makes you believe in the mileage. But the paint code is right here on the VIN. And this 3G paint code is not the crystal white that the car is painted. Crystal white is UC. This is 3G, which is the uh, silver metallic. So this car has been completely repainted. And, and I, this hood does not seem to be the original from the vehicle. Um, so I think they got the hood and maybe the fenders and such as well and put it on here because, and that's, what's making me doubt possibly the mileage, but the quarter panels in the back are in the best condition. Funny enough, the doors are probably in the worst condition, which is normal on cars, right? Cause they swing open, they're moving par right? That's where other cars park and hit you in the door. So that's not uh, alarming. 
but um, yeah, I'm okay with it. The seats are clearly from a blue trim vehicle that they put in here, but that's fine because they're in good condition and eventually we'll get different seats as well. And oh, uh, let's see, these side skirts could be mounted a little bit better. So they're missing the clips, so I don't think they were um, on here from the factory, but that's all right. I even had a pair of these exact same side skirts to put on the other FC, so that's cool. But, but overall, overall, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I'm just listing some things. And um, oh, and another big one is the AC is not working. Um, I don't know if it's both the compressor and the HVAC system, but the blower doesn't turn on. So I can't get any airflow through the cabin, which is something I was really, really hopeful for when I decided to purchase a vehicle, but it wasn't guaranteed. And I think that's a pretty wise decision given the fact that, you know, it's a 30 year old car imported from Japan. Who knows how long it was sitting, used, run, who went, blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna be prioritizing that because it is August going on September right now. And September in Southern California is the hottest month and it would be great to have AC. And then it quickly gets cold, at least cold for us here. And um, yeah, I would love to have a blowing heater as well. That is the new car. Thank you all for being patient and, watch and waiting um, because I know it's been a long time since we had the FC Fire video and we haven't been able to make much content. We are working on that uh, FC, we have been. So there has been some progress, mostly disassembly, um, diagnosing and gathering up parts so that we can reutilize that engine. The short term plan actually is to take the S4 FC's engine, swap it into here with the Haltech. While we work on that chassis, strip things apart, and that way we can drive this vehicle, have this engine removed, and we will be having Lucky 7 build this engine also. We're planning a different turbo setup and a higher horsepower number, because again, track car, and then we'll take that engine and put it in the other FC. And hopefully those two timelines will line up for us financially and just um, on the labor hours that are needed to get that car ready to roll again and gather up money for all the other parts that we're gonna cannibalize into this vehicle. So that's a rough plan. I hope you guys are happy. Um, I'm certainly happy, but I have a lot of work ahead of me. Our next video, which I'm gonna start shooting pretty much right away, because I have two days off and I'm very excited, is I'm gonna start cannibalizing those parts from the other FC, get the interior looking as nice as we can, see if we can get the radio working, start diagnosing things, finding out what this equipment in here, if it's working, if it needs to be removed, um, getting the wing switched out, yada, 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 all those things so we can make this as nice as it can be. Thank you again, everyone, for watching. Remember to be kind to each other out there. And when they ask you, tell them you want more. <laughs>